through the monopoly of our academic institutions, film, TV, music, art, newspapers, cable news programming, and Hollywood influencers, the left has had the privilege of relentlessly pushing down the throats of the public what it wants people to believe. This is the great indoctrination scheme, and it has a clear and obvious goal to completely surround you with what they want you to know and censor out what they don't want you to know. The great indoctrination scheme has been enormously successful for the left, and it starts by indoctrinating children and sexualizing them as early and graphically as possible. Perhaps for the first time in a long time, people are taking um, a hard look at what exactly is going on with respect to the education of their children. And in this case, I would argue the indoctrination of their children. Because it's, it's political indoctrination. The unmitigated attempts of the left to target your children in order to push their leftist agenda. Always for the left. Always for the left. It has to be done through schools and through children. They always have to push the left agenda through children. It's always for the good of the kids. Of course, all that means is screwing with kids' heads, but it's all for the good of the kiddies. What this really is about is indoctrination and perversion of children. That's really what this is about. The left always starts with kids. The left-wing attempt to sexualize children is an endless one that I've shed light on many times in the past. There are steps being made to teach children as young as four about sex and gay lifestyles. And this sexualization of children is accelerating. The left believes that they ought to be making decisions for your children. And the left doesn't believe that children ought to be making decisions for society. They believe that they ought to be making decisions for your children. And the only reason that your children are growing up in the way they are is because of you. You are the problem. If they were allowed to raise your children, then everything would be fine. Now, they can't just say that. If you're, if you're on the hard left, you can't just say this. You can't just say, listen, I think I'm going to do a better job raising your kid than you will. Their whole case is that parents should not be allowed to raise their children with traditional morality and traditional sex roles because that's bad. And that's bad because the government can't control the kids then. It's bad because traditional sex roles, the idea of man-woman marriage, creation of a family, it's an obstacle to government control of your child. And so what they do is they use the bullying agenda in order to come in and take control of your children by saying that if we leave it to you to educate your own kid, then your kid will end up being a bully and targeting other kids, which of course is absolute nonsense. A PTA president performed an erotic drag routine for public school students in Manhattan in front of children as young as five years old to raise LGBT awareness. The PTA president gyrated on stage in a short black dress and matching thong, which he spread his legs to show the audience at the talent show. California is forcing gay history into classrooms. The changes impact elementary, middle school, and high school history and social science instruction starting in second grade. So they're going to bring it back to the 1960s and they're going to try to tie it into civil rights. That's what's going on with that. I could tell, and that's really irresponsible in my humble opinion to be trying to drag, you know, the civil rights movement into it because these things are not really related. And th this unfortunately is going to continue because the left is fully ensconced in its own navel gazing with regard to the new civil rights movement it's created for itself. It's not a civil rights movement at all. It's a way of destroying childhood innocence. In Washington state, schools are now teaching kindergartners about transgenderism and that gender is a social construct. In 2016, a science education professor proposed that elementary school children in Arizona should make sex education in kindergarten mandatory because children are being taught heteronormative and limited ideas in science classrooms and queer theory and sexuality infused curricula is the answer. She explored, quote, bringing sexual taboo topics into the elementary classroom by exploring how queer theory can be a useful tool for reimagining elementary science education and believe that we should be inviting sexuality into the elementary science classroom, noting it should be mandatory. In Toronto, schools are also forcing gay history in classrooms, despite parents sharing their concerns that the curriculum will sexualize their children and destroy their natural innocence by teaching them sexually explicit content from the earliest of ages in a framework obviously based on ideology and not genuine science. The curriculum will teach young children about genitalia, explicit details about reproduction, masturbation, and homosexual practice. Another school teacher is even caught bragging about her LGBT indoctrination to children ages four to five years old. At a gay activist conference for teachers, a lesbian teacher explained in detail how she uses the classroom to convince children as young as four years old to accept homosexual relationships. The teacher admitted to going from class to class to talk about gay issues with the principal's encouragement. The teacher also started by reading King and King in the class of children four to five years old with the goal of using the book as a springboard to discuss her sexuality with the kids, especially when she 
she gets to the part where the two princes become married, which can elicit what she calls conversations about homosexuality. But she enjoyed these conversations because they provide a rich environment for our students as they unpack these complex social issues. I have no idea why she wants to have conversations about these complex social issues with children four to five years old, but my guess is because none of them are equipped to rebut her, it makes it easy for her to win those exchanges. Another teacher openly admitted that she hid her promotion of homosexuality to the kids in what she called social justice math. She mentioned how she spends time building a common vocabulary in her classroom with words like stereotype, prejudice, discrimination, so her students will be able to more readily conform to her pro-LGBTQ message. We have ageism, yeah. classism, yeah. sexism, yeah. racism, yeah. faith as an ism, yeah. ableism, yeah. and no. heterosexism. Yeah. Is gay a bad word? No, no. no. The word gay just means two people of the same sex that love each other. And it's not a bad word to say gay. It's only a bad word if you use it to hurt someone's feelings. You can love whoever you want, but it's not okay to make fun of people for it. Turn to a partner, what ism is this talking about? I think sometimes we are dealing with controversial issues, but I think we have to. I think kids are just like little people and they've got to learn how to get along. And I think sometimes human rights and equality, they trump our personal beliefs. And I know specifically with heterosexism, that's one of the ones that we deal with a lot. People believe they can use those to hate other people and to discriminate. Yeah, so th this has been going on, as you know, Dan, in college campuses for a while, but that's not good enough for the left. They need to do their indoctrination of prospective voters earlier. It's politics and partisan politics. And if you look at the political affiliation of the people running this, they're all Democrats. People just don't understand what's going on here. They want to be all for social justice and all that kind of stuff with the Colin Kaepernick, the hands up, don't shoot. They want to be down for that, but then they don't understand how that same thing that they're fighting for is going to be used to fuel the whole LGBT movement. I remember I said this months ago, maybe years ago, about how when you introduce LGBT stuff into high school, it's going to trickle its way down to very small children, pre-K, kindergarten. And I said that people were like, oh, no, it's not going to happen. Well, here we are. Some parents condemned public libraries for hosting drag queen story times for young children because it is an indoctrination session in the religion of sexual liberation that should not be hosted by any government institution. And these drag queen story times are becoming all the more popular. Who wants to be a drag queen when they grow up? <laughs> Who is ready for a story? Is the host of Drag Queen Story Hour. This one is called Worm Loves Worm. Talking, singing, and reading. We can both be grooms. We can both be grooms. We can both be grooms. To an audience of preschoolers, toddlers. But these aren't isolated incidents. For example, the children's book, The Bravest Night Fairy Tale, is to be read in classrooms across America. The Bravest Night is a new children's story aimed at children as young as four years old with a gay plot twist at the very end, as Matt Walsh writes. It's the complete breakdown of tradition and family wrapped up in a cute cartoon and shoved down the throats of children. Another school in Charlotte faced backlash for trying to read more gay indoctrination books, this one called Jacob's New Dress, to first grade children without notifying the parents. The book is about a young boy who wants to be a girl and has parents, instead of being parents and telling him he's a boy, play along with his mental delusion and send him to school in a dress. The Adventures of Tony the Tampon has been used as a coloring book to destigmatize menstruation. Now it's being used to degender the female biological processes and persuade children that men get periods too and appease the transgender activists. A professor from the University of Rhode Island published an article that argued for placing more transgender books or gender fluid protagonist books in preschool libraries. The professor writes, by using carefully selected children's literature, teachers can make a positive difference in the lives of individuals who are transgender. Another transgender indoctrination book was read to California school children without notifying the parents, which left many of the children, quote, traumatized. A Rockland Academy teacher was reading books on transgender identity in a kindergarten classroom while one of her students was transitioning. I want to be the one that teaches my kids about these controversial issues, not the school. I'm the parent. I know what's best for my kids. So this was alarming at the young age and that it was outside of the curriculum and there was no notice given. This all stems from a June incident inside a Rockland Academy charter school where a teacher read two books, including I Am Jazz, on what it means to be transgender to her kindergarten class. The book, according to the school, was not only age appropriate, but part of the California Department of Education's recommended reading list and given to the teacher by a transgender student. Some parents said their children were left traumatized and confused.
The students who took part in the ceremony were reportedly left shaken and disturbed. Yes. According to Keller, who's this guy from the family group, he said kids were left really deeply emotionally bothered and traumatized. There were several of the little girls that went to their parents and were crying, saying, Mommy or Daddy, am I going to turn into a boy? This is evil. It's evil. Okay, teachers who are teaching entire classrooms of small children that they can magically transform into members of the opposite sex, facing legal trouble from parents rightly outraged over having their children exposed to transgenderism without their knowledge, Rockland Academy Schools maintains they had no obligation to inform the parents since California laws require consent only in matters of sex education. So let me get this straight. It's not sex education when, when you decide to tell a five-year-old boy that it can be a five-year-old girl. The lesson, they say, had to do with gender identity, which the school claims falls under tolerance and diversity curricula. Administrators are now recommending a change in the parent handbook that would suggest that the school will endeavor to notify parents about controversial topics being discussed. Endeavor to notify is too loose, in my opinion. Who is accountable for that? What will we be notified of? It's impossible to say that every controversial topic, you know, the teacher is going to be able to give a heads up ahead of time because that's just not how classrooms work. We receive emails about parking and everything under the sun. This shouldn't be an issue. It seems like an email list of parents to notify them when teaching topics like this would not be very difficult, but they don't want to do it because they don't want parents to pull their kids from the lessons. What we do know is even if they choose to notify parents, those parents will still not be able to opt out. And since this incident, at least 14 families have pulled their children from this school. You see, it's difficult to indoctrinate people unless it's mandatory. It must be forced upon by the powers that be. The indoctrination works well only when everyone accepts it. And for everyone to accept it, they have to reach students as young as possible. The belief that indoctrination of the young by perverse leftists is repeated over and over by parents who support the indoctrination under the guise of that we're really just teaching them early so they don't hate. Pam Douglas was one of many who supported the transgender lesson. She says doing otherwise is simply intolerant. At the crux of it, it's sad. I mean, it's, it's bigotry, plain and simple, it's bigotry. But really, it's not about teaching not hating people. It's about getting them when they're young and malleable. The cycle of fear and hatred of people that are those others who aren't like me, that cycle has to be broken somewhere. And I think the best place for that process to start is with our, our youngest children so that they don't ever learn you know, the, to hate. Calling parents who resist this indoctrination bigots and justifying the perverse indoctrination of children under the smokescreen of we're just teaching them not to hate is just an attempt to conceal their true agenda. These teachers know exactly what they're doing. Here's what the left is seeking to do. They're seeking to say that a, that a five-year-old can be taught by their teacher without parental permission that he is a she, but a 15-year-old cannot have the option of praying at the 50-yard line with a coach. That's an agenda, folks. Okay, that's not about protecting the innocence of children. It's about depriving them of certain types of choice that they don't like and giving them types of choice that they do like. And when I say types of choice, I mean screwing them up permanently in many cases because it is important to promulgate a leftist view of social politics. That's scary stuff. And, you know, that's, that's got to be fought at every turn by, by good, uh, goodwill people who are parents. Okay, I'm a parent. You try to do this to my kid. You try to do this to my kid. You wonder why people are taking their kid out of public school and sending them to private school. You wonder why people are retreating from the public square. You wonder why the fever pitch of politics is so high right now. It's because of garbage like this. They are deliberately trying to indoctrinate children. In fact, the indoctrination scheme has become so pervasive that many have even stopped trying to deny it altogether. One gay columnist admitted as much, writing, They accuse us of exploiting children, and in response we say, No, we're not going to make kids learn about homosexuality. We swear. It's not like we're trying to recruit your children or anything. The columnist continues, But let's face it, that's a lie. We want educators to teach future generations of children to accept queer sexuality. In fact, our very future depends on it. Why would we push anti anti-bullying programs or social studies classes that teach kids about the historical contributions of famous queers unless we wanted to deliberately educate them to accept queer sexuality as normal. I, and a lot of other people, want to indoctrinate, recruit, teach, and expose children to queer sexuality, and there's nothing wrong with that. You see, they don't have to deny it because there's nothing wrong with it. A man who teaches K-12 art teachers argued in favor of using art education to help kids turn out queer. In his efforts to fight against the heteronormative realities of most K-12 schools, he argues that art teachers could 
impart a queerer agenda on students that might actually help kids turn out queer. The teacher who identifies as a queer scholar lists a few ways teachers could achieve this, such as implementing queer art lessons, embracing a queer agenda in class, and using queer affirmation strategies to help gay students feel more included. Further, he argues that schools have a duty to speak frankly with students about queer sex. The teacher says, quote, queerness and its attention to sex may seem inappropriate, but sex is still a core component of the human experience, and one that schools cannot deny. However, the teacher complains that the grip of heteronormativity on school curricula makes it less practical to argue that schools should help produce queer subjects or take avowedly queer stances, despite his belief that we can and perhaps should help kids turn out queer. Another gay activist, a woman who identifies as a transgender man, admitted as much in a piece for Huffington Post called, I have come to indoctrinate your children into my LGBTQ agenda, and I'm not a bit sorry. She writes, all that time I said I wasn't indoctrinating anyone with my beliefs about gay and lesbian and bi and trans and queer people, that was a lie. That is absolutely my goal. At the moment, I am helping to put the finishing touches on a series of children's books that all feature lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer kids or families. The story gets even more disturbing when she writes, why did I become interested in children's literature? Is it because I'm a parent now? The truth is this. Partly, I became interested because I was getting a nightly practicum on how the books a kid hears at bedtime affect their sleep and also their dreams, both in the micro and macro sense. She's literally talking about her euphoria of indoctrinating young children with perverse stories, and that's why she likes writing children's stories. She gets off on infecting young children's conscious and subconscious minds with her grotesque agenda when they're awake and asleep. This is really sick stuff. When another school faced criticism for indoctrinating school children of an impressionable age by encouraging them to explore their gender identities, the deputy head at the school in regards to teaching gender fluidity said, it is never too young to start. I think it is very important that we educate the children the best we can from that very early starting point in terms of teaching them about gender and about gender stereotypes. Well, supposedly it's because the left believes that sexual identity, sexual identity is unchanging and rigid, and sex itself, gender itself, is malleable. Therefore, if you teach kids that they get to choose your sex, since it's malleable, it's a social construct anyway, you're not doing them any harm. You tell a five-year-old girl to choose whether she's a girl or a boy, you're not harming her in any way because that's all just social construct nonsense. Similarly, if you tell a five-year-old girl that lesbianism is fine, she's not going to be more likely to try out lesbianism because she's already set in her ways. It's all biological, right? It's ingrained right there in the biology. Of course, precisely the reverse is true. You tell a five-year-old girl she can be a girl or a boy, you're going to screw with her head. You tell a five-year-old girl that anybody she chooses to have sex with when she's not even pubescent yet, right, that anybody who she will eventually choose to have sex with is perfectly morally hunky-dory and you think this isn't going to change behavior, nonsense, nonsense, particularly because science tends to show that sexuality is remarkably fluid. Sexual identity certainly is remarkably fluid. There's a reason that two generations ago, there's a poll in Britain recently, it showed for people of, who were born two generations ago, 95% say they're straight. Of people who were born in our generation, millennials, something like only 43% say they are binary straight. Okay, 43%. Don't tell me that's genetics, gang. That's society pushing a perception of what sexual identity is. Should be. Leftists aren't dumb. They know all of this. But if you're sane, moral, and do not think it's appropriate to deliberately infect children's minds, then you resist this insane indoctrination. But the indoctrination scheme doesn't work if only half the students are subject to it. So in order to ensure the left can pursue their bizarre fetish for this sexualization of young children, the only way to get it done is through sheer force, no matter what the parents want. A school educating K-12 through students instituted a new gender inclusion policy that offers no chance for parents to opt out. The school did so after facing a lawsuit from two parents blaming the school for for not being inclusive enough on gender. The 16th month legal battle eventually ended in a settlement with the school adopting a new gender inclusion policy that gives no allowance for parents to opt out based on religious or conscientious objections and promises to not call parents or guardians attention to policy or allowing them to opt out of specific instruction regarding gender inclusion. Other schools also refused to let parents opt out of LGBT indoctrination in a letter submitted to the media director of education, he was unambiguous that a request from parents to have their children opt out of LGBT indoctrination would not be accommodated. Again, they won't let students opt out because they must indoctrinate you with this nonsense or else there's a chance you won't grow up to believe what they want you to believe. This ruling came as a result of a father asking to be alerted beforehand when and how his children who were ages 4 and 6 would be taught homosexuality, abortion, and cultural relativism. Once notified, he could choose to keep them at home so he could decide whether to withdraw them from class. But the school refused to accommodate the request. A superior court justice ruled the father's charter rights had been violated but that was reasonable because of the competing
competing charter values of inclusivity, equality, and multiculturalism, and public school boards' statutory obligations to that over the parents' wishes. The Campaign Life Coalition's senior political strategist called the Superior Court Justice's ruling a brazen, unashamed admission that indoctrination was the goal. In fact, some Canadian schools are making disapproval of the transgenderism of their kid child abuse. Ontario passed a law that gives the government the right to take away children from families who oppose or criticize the LGBT agenda by not accepting their kid wanting to be transgender. According to the new bill, if the parents are ruled to be abusers by failing to wholeheartedly support their child's gender choice, that child can, quote, be removed from that environment and placed into protection where the abuse stops. The old law allowed parents to direct the child's education and religious upbringing, but now says a parent must influence a child's education and upbringing, quote, in accordance with the child's or young person's creed, community identity, and cultural identity. The totalitarian Bill's founder said, quote, I would consider that a form of abuse. When a child identifies one way and a caregiver is saying no, you need to do this differently. An Ontario child and youth advocate celebrated the bill, saying it signals a paradigm shift and creates a child-centered system of service that displays a strong commitment to anti-racism and children's rights. The Campaign Life Coalition's senior political strategist said of the new law, quote, with the passage of Bill 89, we've entered an era of totalitarian power by the state such as never witnessed before in Canada's history. Bill 89 is a grave threat to Christians and all people of faith who have children. While these schools say not allowing your child to be transgender is child abuse, that statement comes in direct conflict with the American College of Pediatricians, you know, doctors. The American College of Pediatricians released a statement declaring that conditioning children into believing a lifetime of chemical and surgical impersonation of the opposite sex is normal and healthful is child abuse. The statement adds that while 9 out of 10 gender dysphoric children ultimately accept their biological sex, those that do not are committed to a, quote, lifetime of carcinogenic and otherwise toxic cross-sex hormones and likely consider unnecessary surgical mutilation of their healthy body parts as young adults. But even youth who go no further than the hormone blocker and then revert to their natural gender may still need hormone injections just to achieve normal puberty. But this forced indoctrination doesn't stop there. 300 schools in Australia have signed onto a new transgender policy which would allow schools to facilitate the gender transition of students as young as six years old without parental consent. Within the guide supporting student affirmed transition, it says, quote, if a student does not have family or care or support for the process, a decision to proceed should be made based on the school's duty of care for the student's well-being and their level of maturity to make decisions about their needs. It may be possible to consider a student a mature minor and able to make decisions without parental consent. Another teacher chose to indoctrinate her students by setting up a gay play where two princes fall in love. Some of the parents slammed the school on social media for staging the gay play. One of the parents accused the school of social engineering and wrote in a public post, quote, I think people who promote PC sex to kids below 11 border on pedophilia and are depraved. But the teacher says she refused to be cowed by homophobic parents. In response to the posts on social media, police were called to report that a number of homophobic comments had been made on Facebook. This was investigated as a hate incident, but ultimately determined the comments did not amount to a criminal offense. Another school in a wealthy Minnesota suburb has also transformed schools into indoctrination factories and don't even try to conceal their sinister goals. Elementary school students are now subjected to an ABC book titled A is for Activists. Among the alphabetized propaganda points are A for activists, are you an activist? C is for creative counter to corporate vultures. F is for feminists. T is for trans. A head teachers union also tells schools to be more supportive of LGBT teachers who want to reveal their sexual identity in the classroom as it would make children better, quote, citizens of the world and make head teachers responsible for ensuring an inclusive school environment and will also instruct teachers to support staff in teaching LGBT issues and serve sex education classes include gay and transgender experiences and modified dress codes to avoid gender stereotyping. Why it's important for teachers to come out in the classroom doesn't seem very relevant, but it is because it gives them a reason to then sexualize them with their agenda. In fact, LGBT public school teachers in Chicago are bringing gay pride to classrooms all year long, indoctrinating them early with taxpayer support. A queer kindergarten teacher at a public Chicago school exposes five-year-olds to bringing queerness into her classroom throughout the year by challenging gender norms, reading books with queer characters like Anne Tango Makes Three and My Princess Boy. The teacher wants to celebrate gay pride in classrooms all year long because she doesn't really like the gay pride month thing because she, quote, mostly really hate pride and the pride parade and all the white male cis capitalist booze filled celebrations that this month involves. Maybe next year I'll try to use it as an opportunity to read a few extra books with queer characters. Another instructor, a special education coordinator in New York City public schools thinks stretching gay pride throughout the entire year is culturally responsive teaching. The indoctrination scheme knows no bounds. Now schools are even fighting to prevent children from having best friends.
In a recent article, psychologist Barbara Greenberg endorsed efforts by schools in this country and in Europe to abolish best friends. But it does seem like, it doesn't seem like it is a form of insidious social control to try and tell other people who to be friends with. I mean, who would want to tell someone who to be friends with in the first place? Do you think it's a little weird? Well, I think what's happening, I don't necessarily think they're telling kids which friends they can have and which they can't. They're encouraging kids to have larger friend groups. I think that they're trying to avoid children having cliques. So what they do is they try to get children to play with larger groups of kids and, and sort of run in larger packs with each other. They don't want students to have best friends because they don't want students to have any voices outside of the states. They wouldn't want students to confide in others who look around and recognize what they're being taught as total nonsense. You can't have drifters developing their own line of thought outside the indoctrination agenda. You don't need a best friend. The state is your best friend. While children are getting perverse transgender books, that's not the only indoctrination that's taking place. Education Action Group abstained a Common Core teacher guide that produced a two-week lesson plan for fourth graders using the book The Jacket, which Olson states, it's a fun little book about racism and white privilege, a left-wing concept that teaches African Americans that the values of American society are designed to benefit white people. Another Common Core text for second and third graders titled Where Do Polar Bears Live is about the impact of global warming on polar bears' food sources as a shrinking ice pack makes seal hunting particularly challenging, and the book's last two pages cover climate change in even more detail, including suggestions for ways that kids can reduce their own carbon footprints. In another book, the story of Cesar Chavez introduces second graders to the founder of the United Farm Workers Union and Equality Lessons. As part of the two-week lesson, students read the book, then indicate the living conditions of the farm workers on one side and the living conditions of the landowners and business owners on the opposite side. Teachers are instructed to say fairness and equality exists when the scales are balanced, and that unfairness and inequality exists when the scales are weighted heavily on one side and are out of balance. Teachers then get the classroom conversation going by asking the second graders, do you think both sides are equal? These types of exercises, of course, are to impose a disgust towards wealth and capitalism. This type of indoctrination of children largely through sex is not actually new. It's been part of the leftist playbook for decades. You have to get children early when they're most malleable. The sexualization of children is important because it will break down their moral fibers and mold them how you wish. Have them reject their parents' oppression of moral standards. Lukács introduced a radical sex education program into the Hungarian schools. He tried to actually undermine the unity of the family and that was one of the reasons that he tried to introduce sex education. Laszlo Pastor, a leader in the Hungarian resistance against the communist takeover of Hungary after World War II, explains why children were targeted. It's always much tougher to convert an adult, you know, to do something what he was taught not to do. The left always aspire to have the ability to forcibly indoctrinate young children to their way of thinking. Both Lenin and Hitler had programs focused on indoctrinating youth decades ago. One of the purposes was to instill in children the idea that they are involved in the world revolution, which is more important than any family ties. Communist thinking on children's schools and youth organizations include such thoughts about indoctrinating children. As Lenin said, quote, We must make the young into a generation of communists. Children are like soft wax, are very malleable, and they should be molded into good communists. We must rescue children from the harmful influence of the family. We must nationalize them. From the earliest days of their little lives, those children born after the Bolshevik Revolution were explicitly told that they were to build a utopia of brotherhood and justice and to not be like their parents, but completely red. The Hitler Youth Movement was a logical extension of Hitler's belief that the future of Nazi Germany was its children. The Hitler Youth as an organization was seen as being as important to a child as school was. In the early years of the Nazi government, Hitler had made it clear as to what he expected German children to be like. Hitler wanted to occupy the minds of the young in Nazi Germany. Hitler Youth was created in the 1920s, and by 1936, they had 4 million members of children and youth in their organization, primarily because they were forced to join the group. In 1931, the Vatican accused the fascists and Mussolini of similar indoctrination and denounced their effort to monopolize completely the young from their tenderest years up to manhood and womanhood for the exclusive advantage of a party and of a regime based on an ideology which clearly resolves itself into a true, real pagan worship of the state. But for the perverse audience of the left, it's always sexualizing them and as young as possible. And I think the best place for that process to start is with our, our youngest children, our youngest children, our youngest children. It's always much tougher to convert an adult, you know, to do something what he was taught not to do.